Dynamic format strings came out in April this year, which means that now you have the ability to format a measure using a DAX calculation. How awesome is that? But here is the thing. This is not a new feature which is added in Power BI. It was already existing in calculation groups while you were creating calculation items. It's just that now you have the flexibility of accessing dynamic formatting for measures within Power BI. What exactly is dynamic formatting strings? How does it work? And a few nifty tricks around that is what I'm gonna talk about in this video. All right, no further ado, let's start. Okay, people, first things first, if you are in the April 2023 version of Power BI or anything further than that, you have to activate dynamic formatting strings first. How do you do that? Go over to the file and then go over to options, then go over to options once again. In here, you'll have to go over to the preview features, which is right here, and then please activate dynamic formatting strings for measures. Now, once you do that, it's going to restart your Power BI, and then you will have the ability to access that. But without any further mystery, what exactly is that? Let's just take a look with a simple measure that I'm working with. So here is a measure, which is a measure, which is 150. You can take a look at the DAX. It's ridiculously simple. All that I've done is made a measure, a measure, and the value is 150. That doesn't matter. It could be as complex as you would like. But now you have the ability to create dynamic formatting for this measure. So all that you have to do is click on the measure, then you go over to the format and in here choose something like dynamic. Once you do that, this is going to give you the ability to switch between the measure and the format of that particular measure. So take a look right here. I have a measure. I can switch that into the format and that's where I can write a certain format. Now, let me just show you how exactly does this format work. Now, in this particular format, what I can do is I can write a string that delivers a type or a format that is going to apply it to a measure. And the format is going to be divided into three parts. The first part of the formatting is going to be for positive numbers. Then you add a semicolon. The second part is going to be for negative numbers in case your measure is returning a negative output. And the last part after the semicolon, of course, is going to be for zero. So these are the three basic parts of whatever code that you write here and your code is going to work as per that. So let's just start with the positive numbers first. So I'm saying that in case I have a positive number, I would like to display that in one decimal. Zero is like a variable that stands for any particular number. So I'm saying whatever number you have, just make that as one decimal, as simple as that. Now you put a semicolon, then you start to talk about how would you like to show your negative numbers. Maybe I'd like to show my negative numbers with a negative sign and then just one decimal again. Then for anything which is a zero, in case the measure is returning zero as an output, I can just write a dash. That's it. I'm just going to press enter and this is going to be good to go. Now let's just go back to our measure, which is a measure. Let's just maybe convert that value into, let's say a negative hundred. Now, because we said that this is also going to have one decimal and you're just going to have a negative sign. That's what you get to see here. Now, in case you were to write a zero here and then press enter, you get the dash that we specified in our formatting. All right, so that was the vanilla format of the formatting. Let's just try something more chocolatey so that you get more taste out of it. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my measure, which is currently a zero. I'm just gonna make it as a hundred for now, and then go back to the format and start to write a more creative type of a format. So I'm gonna say that, hey, um, a positive number is going to be just the way it is, but guess what? I'd like to maybe show a tick mark after you know the number. So I can go ahead and insert a tick mark emoji, and the way that I insert a tick mark emoji is by using the shortcut windows and the dot. And that actually opens up a little, you know, window here in which I can choose any emoji that I'd like. I can very well type that I would like to have a tick mark. I'm going to use the tick mark and the tick mark is right here. Now for a negative number, I don't really want a negative sign. Maybe I want the negative numbers to be wrapped around in the brackets. And after that, sure enough, I do want a cross sign. And that is my cross sign and uh, zeros are just going to be the way it is and I'm just going to commit to this particular format and you can see that we do get a tick mark. Now, it seems that this is a text output but guess what, this is not a text output. Output? <laughs> but guess what, this is not a text output, this is still a number and you can very well connect this measure to other measures, referencing this measure and carry out other calculations, although it is going to show up like this. This is pretty brilliant. If I were to change my output and I say that this is now going to be a negative output, you get do get the cross. This is pretty creative. And of course, if you do have a zero, I'm just going to maybe write a zero and that is going to just give me a dash. 
At the moment, the problem is that the format that you have chosen to written is hard-coded right here. It's not dynamic. I mean, you can't really control the output of the format dynamically through DAX. Well, guess what? You can do that. Let's just take a look at another measure that I'm working with, which is right here, which is nothing but a random value. And I have marked that value as a negative thousand. And I have also made a table right here in the table measure. I have dragged that particular measure, which is nothing but negative 1000. And because there is no relationship, it's just a hard coded value. It shows me 1000 all across the table. Now, what I'd like to do is display the measure in a certain way in the visual and differently when I'm creating a card visual. How do I make that happen? So let's just also make that card visual right here from the random value and I do get a card visual and you can see that in the card visual I kind of get a more creative down arrow right here with uh, you know the number presented like this and how does the measure change between displayed in the table and the card visual well we'll have to take a look at the DAX that I'm working with so I'm just going to go back to the random value the DAX is not very difficult it's just a hard coded value but I have marked that as a dynamic measure up on the top and I have switched now to the format and that is where my DAX is working to make the measure appear differently whether you are in the table visual or you are chosen to work with the card visual. All right, let's just take a look at the DAX. So I'm saying that, hey, uh, please take a look that if the empty column, which is this particular column, are you in the scope of the visual or not? If you are in the scope of the visual in that scenario, this is how I am choosing to display the measure. The selected measure references the value that is generated by you know, the formula or the DAX, which is nothing but negative 1000 hard coded. So that is being picked up right here. And then I use the negative 1000 to format it like this. This is how I'm formatting the positive numbers. And this is how I am formatting the negative numbers right here. In case you have zeros, you can add another semicolon and you can format for the negative, the zeros as well. Now, um, then I say that in case you are outside of the scope of the table visual, in that scenario, I would want you to again pick up the negative 1000 and please add a little tick mark sign. If you're a positive number, a semicolon to move to the negative part. Here is the negative part. Again, a semicolon. Here is where you have a zero. And that is nothing but a way of dynamically formatting the calculation, depending upon whether that is being used in the table or outside the table. Now, this is one example of DAX. I'm sure you can come up with very creative ways of finding different formats that you'd like to apply because you have the exposure of DAX to format your measures. How awesome is that? And just in case, if I make that as a positive number, sure enough, I do get a tick. And in case I make that as a zero, sure enough, the zero seems to be a dash outside of the table visual. That is pretty awesome. All right, my final trick. I'm working with another calculation that I have declared right here, which is what I'm calling it as another random value. And I have declared this as a hard-coded value of one. Now, what you can do, Again, using maybe DAX or no DAX, howsoever you'd like to do it. But in case you wrap this around in the format function and you say something like a Boolean, like a yes or a no, in case the value is one or anything more than one, it's going to give you a yes. In case the value is a zero, it's actually going to give you a no. So if I just kind of roll back and say, go back to the measure and turn that as zero, which is a zero output of the measure, this is going to show me no. Even if I happen to write a 10, this is still going to be yes, because that is not a zero. Now you can swap that yes and no with a true and false, on and off and all of that is going to work just okay remember the true part or the yes part comes first and the no part or the false part comes in the end now obviously that raises a question in your mind okay fine you have used the format function maybe in a few creative ways in this calculation or in the dynamic formatting strings how would i get to know what all possibly can i do with the format function so that's not a problem. I have written a blog post quite a while ago on using the format function creatively. And now that we have dynamic formatting strings, you can carry all of that knowledge and feed it into your DAX to creatively format how the output of your measures look like. I'm going to leave a link to the blog in the description of the video and you should take a look at that. All right, that's been it, the dynamic formatting strings. Let me know in case you found this interesting and in case you have any questions, please feel free to drop in a comment and also do let me know how creatively are you planning to use this feature. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses in case you are a beginner in Power BI and you'd like to master the fundamentals really well and then move on to solving more sophisticated, more challenging problems, even to build confidence of handling your own problems of data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It is going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.